All right. I am so excited, so honored to have CJ Montano here on the Move Happy Movement podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. Hi, Erin. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. For those that you know don't know your story, why not? I always love to connect um, the audience with how I meet all these amazing people such as yourself. So we actually connected on one of my posts on LinkedIn and just happened to be, you know, team sports week and collaboration. And you had some great points that you made on there. And then we just kind of started the conversation from there. So LinkedIn, man, LinkedIn's where it's at. For those that don't know who you are, don't know your background, why don't you share a little bit about your origin story? For sure. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm, I'm super excited about meeting with you and, and connecting with your audience. So for me, and I think the thing that ultimately resonated between Erin and I was um, she had made a post and it was uh, somehow triggered a thought in my mind because uh, currently I am uh, the chief services officer of a, of a technology software group. And um, this after many sort of tribulations throughout my career in technology, I've, I've done basically everything you can imagine in technology. But the thing that had been connecting with me and resonating with me recently and, and the post that you are mentioning was that um, we talk a lot about, um, you know, the fundamentals of, of, of what, um, you know, traditional like a, a sports athlete might go through in their, in their maturing years and growing up years. And it really mm-hmm. resonated with me as both a, a previous competitive hockey player uh, mm-hmm. throughout a lot of different places. And now as somebody who is uh, at the top of an organization and coaches um, younger athletes and and things like that, Mm -hmm. um, I see your mission and what we're trying to do here as um, there's just, just a lot of parallels between the fundamentals of becoming a great athlete and the fundamentals that it takes to get to the top of an organization. And so for me, bringing those two things together was really important and it just resonated with me. And so I, 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 that's who I am. Somebody who is always connected well with sports and the power of sports Mm -hmm. and now who has succeeded in my career and business, which seemingly doesn't have a lot to do with sports. But I think as we'll go through this podcast, we'll kind of make those parallels about how the greatest athletes will make the greatest leaders as well. Absolutely. I, I totally believe that hundred percent. And for those that are aspiring to get in the top of their field career wise, whether it's in the IT space or otherwise, um, what are some tips and strategies you can share on keeping a positive mindset um, while they're kind of building up momentum in their careers? Yeah, I, you know, it's a good question. I think that um, I'll make no bones about this. There's going to be hard times and positivity, I believe, you know, I guess it's a little sort of cheesy to just say it's a state of mind, but truthfully, um, and Aaron, I think you actually said this to me recently, you're not always happy, but you're Mm -hmm. always trying to be happy. And Mm -hmm. I think that ultimately the tools and techniques that you need there are one, sort of remember that you're always trying to achieve some level of satisfaction or happiness. and, And that is a goal. It shouldn't just be, I'm trying to do this thing, or I'm trying to do that thing, or this will make me happy. Yeah. Um, ultimately happiness is that state of mind. And so for me, my best advice would be um, recognize that you're not always going to be happy mm-hmm. and that it is just as important to have the tools to get out of those bad cycles that kind of push you down. And the two mm-hmm. things that come to mind are one fundamentals. When you become frustrated or you're in that downward spike spiral, simplify, mm-hmm. schedule your life out, start doing small things that you know you will do well and build on those successes. I love and that. The sec- and the second thing is remember, and, and, and one of my closest partners and allies, her, her name is Vera Kimmy, and maybe I'll introduce you to her here after the podcast, but she always says, remember what it's like to be happy and try to find that place again, because mm-hmm. when you're in that moment, it's so easy to be happy, but remember what it's like to be there so you can return to that feeling. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Those are strong points and super powerful too. just breaking down the simplicity of getting into a routine. I love that you said, do something that you know you'll be good at or you'll have success in. It's those little wins that really are progressing towards towards our own happiness. Progress, a lot of people define happiness as 
continual progress. So great tips. Thank you for that. Um, and you mentioned also this friend of yours. So that kind of ties in with our second pillar. Community is a real strong predictor of either our happiness level, if we've got a strong social health, social community, or on the opposite end, if we're struggling and we don't have connections with others outside of ourselves, could kind of tip the scales more towards the depressive state. So what are some, some tips and strategies, things you've learned um, in the professional space or maybe in the athletic space on building community that you'd like to share with our listeners? I think, you know, diversity matters. Find people that are not like you. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing is find people that are successful in their fields, no matter what field that is, yeah. and, be vul and be vulnerable with them and allow them to be vulnerable with you. Because I could almost guarantee this, anybody who's in a successful place in their life had to go through probably a pretty significant period of depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. doubt. Mm -hmm. Lots yeah. of different things. And when you get to that level of vulnerability with somebody of that nature, it gives you that hope to say, oh, wow, they're not perfect. They didn't just rise to this like through every perfect decision they've ever made. In fact, yeah. and I think most people believe at this point, success is just a, uh, you know, a series of failure, overcome failures, right? You mm -hmm. fail forward and continue to move forward. So yeah. I think that diversify your network to include leaders and be, and allow yourself to be vulnerable with them. But then, especially this person that I'm, I was referring to, she's nothing like me. And every time I think I'm stuck somewhere, she'll just say something like, look, we're all just stardust among the planet. It's like, none of this is like that important. So <laughs> remember your place and, yeah. and kind of just grounds you immediately and makes you go, that's right. There's a million things I could be doing to become happy. I don't have to feel like this one narrow little path that I'm struggling with is the only way. There's there's mm -hmm. lots of ways. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. I love that. And to have that perspective of someone else reaching out and just saying something that we absolutely need in that moment. That's that's wonderful. Thank you for those tips. Uh, third pillar of Move Happy is about movement. Uh, we know that exercise is important for our health. Moving our bodies can you know, improve our mood uh, immediately. And it also can be sustained over time. Um, you mentioned being a, a professional. Uh, well, at one point playing competitive hockey and then coaching as well. Is that your favorite thing to do to move your body or is there something else? I think there's a lot of things. Um, okay. I think an important point here though, is again, to remember especially when you're struggling or you're kind of mm -hmm. in that downward spiral, like athletics and movement become so important. I'll give you a, like, just kind of a little story here. Mm -hmm. When I started my mm, second, third mm -hmm. business, um, I was struggling. I felt alone. I was like sitting in this office. It was just me. I was like on the 33rd floor. I'm like, Oh my God, like I'm failure. I'm a failure. I'm a failure in all ways. And I remember just being returned to the basics in, in the two things that came to me is one, I'm married to a lovely wife who gave me the first piece of advice. She was like, please go play hockey. You're annoying me. Yes. <laughs> but, but what she was really Smart saying woman. was that, yeah, that <laughs> made you happy and you're good at that. And she knew that all of the endorphins would get going. And then my mind would be like, Oh my God, while I was playing, I had all these great ideas. Like just play sports or just move, just, you know, exhaust your body because the blood flow comes and, it, and it's crazy. Yeah. So that was the first thing. But the second thing that also really helped was in sort of alignment with kind of cadence your life or discipline your life as you move forward. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things I used to do was I used to just schedule in and, I, and it would be a non-negotiable thing, commitment to myself. And it would be twice a day. I would just schedule in a meeting on my calendar. It would be 15 minutes. Stop what you're doing. Go outside, walk, grab a water and introduce mm -hmm. yourself to two new people that you meet on the street. Ooh, that I was like my that. way of doing it, but, but mm -hmm. really it was just walking down 30 flights of stairs, going outside 15 minutes and you come back with, again, the endorphins, the fresh yeah. air, the new perspective. So all of that is amazing how quickly within a few days or a week, it's like, I feel better. Like I'm giving some balance to myself and that really, the movement I know, like that really does help you. Yeah. And not to mention, you know, meeting new people, you've got this business. I mean, that could turn into business leads in addition to helping with your social health, mental health, fitness. That's, that's awesome. That's really cool. Love for that. Sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've talked a lot about 
you know, the connection, the parallels of athleticism, sports, with running a company or being a top leader in a company, what are you really, really excited about right now? What's going on in your world that we can support you with? Yeah, I think that um, it's interesting you said this because I'm, I'm sort of at a shift in my career in that we're, we're, me and my partner are running a successful software engineering business and we have really cool things going on. And I'm, I'm not gonna actually focus too much on that because this is about happy movement and, and, and what we could do. But one of the things I wanna bring attention to that both I think helps me as a personal brand and just what I wanna achieve in life is yeah. this sort of concept of bringing, you know, bringing the fundamentals and supporting sort of the young athlete and, you know, it goes all really well in what you're trying to do here and that, you know, athletics is not always celebrated, you know, in the schools or at a young age, it's seen as either, oh, that's just a jock thing. It's not something I will do, or that's stupid. Mm -hmm. Those people are dumb. Um, but <laughs> I think that, you know, I work in the ice rinks and if you've ever really, like really gone to a, just an ice rink at the youth level, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 15 years old, they're not like the friendliest looking places. They're dark, they're holes. There's not like, it's not like a place you choose to just hang out in. But you yeah. know what? I love that because it's where magic happens. And, and I think that the magic I'm talking about is like you learn perseverance and dedication and you learn that there's more than just a facade and the glory of what you see on U.S. figure skating or the top athlete in the world, you know, holding up the Stanley Cup or the World Series trophy. Like they started in those dungeons and they started in some pretty unhappy places. And, and honestly, what you talked to me over the phone about this, Aaron, you talked about when you when you first took over this, I can't remember this group, but you you said you inherited this like sort of dark, dingy weight room and exercise room. And I thought, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? There's magic in those places because the people that succeed in those places are the people that hold up the World Series trophy 20 years down the road. And so how could you support me or like what I'm doing? I don't know. It's It's really not about me. It's about Support those young kids, support those athletes, whether it's inner mm -hmm. city or just within your own community. Mm -hmm. The words, the one word you might say to that one kid that says, wow, what you're doing, not a lot of kids at your age are doing, might drive that kid for the next three or four years. And someday that will pay you back when he comes back and says, thank you. Like, mm -hmm. you don't know how like amazing of a leader you were to me. And you're thinking, I said one thing to you. So to me, <laughs> that plays its way out so well in business and career and professionalism and growth in your life. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I do that now, I'm a coach and I don't get paid for that. And me and my wife talk about this. She does it as well. And she doesn't get paid for it, but that's a good thing. Like give back to your community yeah. at that level. Mm -hmm. It will pay off in your community in, 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 in just general humanity. And I think athletics is a great place to do it because it's fun. The, 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 the resources exist to, to step up. All they really need are those selfless leaders to come in and provide mm -hmm. a little bit of leadership to them. And that I think helps kids really get off to the right start. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I believe that hundred percent. Um, I know I coached, uh, my first year it was, it was middle school. It was their first year ever cross country, low income school, our first practice, we had girls wearing flip flops and I was like, <laughs> did we forget our shoes today or do we not have running shoes? And a lot of them didn't have running shoes. It was just yeah. the, the bare basics, getting them, you know, basic running shoes, like partnering with a local running store. And, you know, they just happen to say, yeah, we'll help you out. Um, give us their shoe sizes and, you know, got the right kinds of shoes for the right activity for them. I didn't know what I was doing as a coach other than I had ran half marathons before that, but I didn't really know what I was doing other than just, I'm willing to be that person that goes and, you know, has that support. Um, we had a head coach as well, and he was, he kind of ran the show too, um, which was helpful. Um, but it, it transformed me working with, with our youth. Um, and it really opened my eyes to being grateful for having two pairs of running shoes at that time, you know, where these kids couldn't even afford their families. Some of them couldn't even afford to get them basic athletic shoes so that they could participate yeah. in sports. Um, and then on the opposite end of town was, you know, super rich area. Mm -hmm. And they were, they won, uh, I got to coach, it was tracks so it was a different season, but 
totally different dynamics in the neighborhood with involved parents, with supportive, you know, team members. They had a hundred plus on that team. And it was our fourth state championship or city citywide, you know, championship to see the dynamics. But no matter what um, the age group is, whatever their situation is at home, I think we all, especially now with COVID, there's so much downplay right now, whether they're not competing at all or whether mm-hmm. some schools have sports and some don't, there's going to be a lot of, uh, I would say a roller coaster of levels that For get sure. to the high school and then get to college. If they continue on playing, there's going to be a lot of gaps. Um, I foresee. So definitely we need more volunteers, uh, whether you can do it full time every day or just once a week, you know, check in, go work out with, you know, a youth, especially our, our young boys too. And a big brothers, big sisters are always looking for male volunteers to step up. So thank you for, for being that for your community and, and being that, that voice, that example, I think more people need to do that. So hundred percent, hundred percent. And you know, to just kind of take that a little bit further, it's, you know, it's, it's also rewarding and developmental for, for me and anybody who mm-hmm. gives to that sport. And, and here's how. You know, when you sit down with somebody who is very young, you learn pretty quickly that how you, how clearly you communicate Mm -hmm. and how well you break down the problem and the solution Mm -hmm. is the critical point of helping that kid move past a roadblock. Yeah. And just in, you know, not that you treat, you know, your cohorts or your, you know, your associates like they're, like they're eight or nine or 10 years old, but it really mm-hmm. gets you back to the fundamentals as a leader mm-hmm. to say when somebody is understanding or isn't vision or doesn't get like where you're going with something, remember you see something that you're very experienced at and it's very obvious to you how it all works, but it's not necessarily obvious to your audience. And in a professional environment where there's pride and bias and fear and job and money and all that on the line, the likelihood of somebody that you're leading actually being vulnerable and admitting that to you mm-hmm. is very, very low versus a kid who'll be, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> like, this doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. They're right? straight to the point. <laughs> They're straight to the <laughs> point. So, and, and so, um, so I think as a leader, you learn, you're like, wow, I bet this is happening over here too. And, and I should apply yeah. some of this sort of thinking in the way that I teach mm-hmm. to this. Like, don't expect everybody to be as good as you. And, and I don't mean that in an arrogant way. I mean, I've been doing my job for 22 years. There's kids coming out of college that have been doing it for zero. So you yeah. know, 22 years, there's a lot of things. And I think yeah. that as leaders, it's, 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 it's incumbent upon us and it behooves us to remember that we shouldn't assume that everybody can do what we do a year out of college. That would be yeah. undermining your whole career, essentially. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, and having that understanding and compassion too for the newbies in the job and the workplace, whatnot, I think too, gives them the feeling and confidence that they can go to you and ask you for help because they know that you don't expect them to be perfect. So I think that's, that's, um, you know, great advice, great reminders. I think that we all need to be actively practicing in the workplace and at home. And if we're volunteering somewhere that can translate to pretty much any scenario. Um, so I always like to close out the show with, you know, a little personal stuff to help the audience kind of connect with you on a on a you know simple fun level so I know I'm just pulling this out of the air um you mentioned your wife has helped you to kind of get back into those positive things by getting you out of the house and back to hockey and whatnot um how did you guys meet is that on the table (laughs) (laughs) it's totally on the table it's hilarious like Aaron, I got to tell you, like, I am not like, I'm a pretty confident person at this point. And I was so worried about this question for like all night. I'm like, what is she going to ask me? Ah! <laughs> um, uh, me and my wife, her name is Gina and uh, her and I actually met. So this is kind of fun. It's a great question because we met at a preparatory school called Choate Rosemary Hall. It's a very, very sort of paradigmic uh, prep school in America. It used to be mm-hmm. ranked in the top three. It's probably top 10 now. And it's oh, a wow. place where like the Trumps and the Kennedys went there. Um, oh, wow. And, and I'm not, and I'm not even suggesting this is like me and me and my wife are lower middle. We grew up in lower middle class or middle class families. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're not like wealthy or anything like that, but 
Um, but I got there because of my hockey. So I was recruited to play hockey there. Mm -hmm. And she, got, she was there because she lived in the town and she was like the smartest kid in town, essentially. So we met <laughs> at like 17 years old and we're actually, today's her 44th birthday and I'm already uh -huh. And uh, yeah, happy birthday, G. Happy birthday. Um, <laughs> but we, so she kind of like, you know, I was like kind of like a star athlete and she was mm -hmm. like a smart kid. And so we just met there through athletics and she used to come watch me play hockey and I, you know, I met her as sort of like this person so yeah it's kind of like a high school love story which is totally totally yeah. crazy but um yeah I knew I've known her since 18 and so we're 44 now so Aww. I mean we haven't been married that long obviously but um mm -hmm. yeah so it's it's actually a great story and I, I, I love when people ask because it reminds me of like uh you know, how, how amazing this all started and we're still, yeah. we're still here. <laughs> and how sports can connect you exactly. to your life partner. <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. And thank you again for being a guest on the show. This has been really fun. Aaron, thank you. I appreciate it. And all the best to all of your, you know, your watchers out there. And I'll just kind of leave it with this. Um, I'm available to you, Aaron. I'm, I, I also don't mind uh, being part of any reach out if, if somebody needs to speak or is looking for that person to understand and have some, you know, uh, context in their life and, and how to get through it. I'm, I'm willing to help you. I think you have a great movement and you're Thank just you. one of the most positive people I've ever seen in your profile and your social sort of profile. It's, it's, Thank it's you. I'm really proud of you and it's pretty cool what you're doing. Thank you so much. And for those that do want to connect with you, what's the best way they can do that? LinkedIn or? Yeah, I think LinkedIn is the best way. I'm pretty okay. active on it. Otherwise, if they want a, you know, something closer to that, they could either direct message me on LinkedIn or they could talk to you. And if you want to forward it to me, to me I'll, we'll go from there. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, thanks again. This has been fun. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Have a good day.